the meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, first item on our agenda is a uh, call to order, and we are missing uh, two members of our board tonight, um, Catherine Miller and Michael Tranfaglia. But we do have a quorum, so we will go forward. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of our March 23, 2001 meeting. Comments? Actually, first a question, maybe a point of order. Our current minutes refer to an approval of the minutes of March 23. However, the minutes themselves are dated March 27. Um, anybody know what the date of our last meeting was? Was it March 23 or 27? Anybody have a calendar? No. No, I don't. March 27, looking at our agenda from the last one. So, um, approval of the minutes of our March 27 meeting. And we'll note for the record that Mr. Tranfaglia has joined us. Welcome. Comments on the minutes from March 27? I have no suggestions for changes, and the only comment is that I think they're excellent, and I thank uh, Sandy for the preparation of them. But any other comments or suggestions for changes? Just echoing your, your thoughts on the, on the minutes. They were an excellent job and quite thorough. Thank you, Sandra. Um, I note it's interesting, uh, Dave, to note that uh, the recorder didn't record a, a, a single part of the whole meeting, and she did this just from what she did for notes, so that's in itself a quite a... Well, which makes them all the more impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Sandy. I move that we accept the minutes of the March 27th meeting. Seconded. Um, motion by uh, Mr. Fristasi, second by uh, Mr. Keneally. Um, all those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes? Um, the um, motion and the minutes um, are approved by a vote of six in favor, uh, zero opposed. The next item on our agenda, old business. We have two items of old business. The first is to hear the request of Michael and Lee Wilson, 82 Two Lights Road, tax map U39, lot four, for a conditional use permit for an accessory dwelling unit. Do we have Michael and Lee Wilson here? Please, Ms. Wilson. Uh, this matter, was originally presented to us back in November, on November 28, 2000, and it was tabled at that time until our January meeting. We did not have a December meeting, as I recall. This was tabled until our January 2001 meeting in order to permit the applicants to submit a complete application. Then, at our January meeting on January 24, it was again tabled uh, to permit uh, Bruce Smith, our CEO, uh, to make arrangements to confirm the dimensions of the accessory dwelling unit that is the subject of your application. So we tabled it at that time until our uh, March 27 meeting. And at the March 27 meeting, um, we didn't hear it because apparently Mr. Smith had been unable to get a hold of you or your husband. Right. We had so said we, we couldn't make we, it to that one. So we tabled it again until today. Um, and Mr. Smith, as I understand it, has gained access to the dwelling. But for the record, um, if you'd tell us your name, please. Lee Wilson. Excuse me. Should we vote to take this off the table? Yes. As a point of order? Please. Would you I like make, to make that I motion? make a motion that we um, remove this from the table for discussion. And a second? 
Second. Um, we have a second. Um, all those in favor of hearing this matter, removing it from the table as tabled from our March 27 meeting. Uh, the motion is approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed, and we will now, now hear the application. Um, I think we should turn to uh, Mr. Smith, since it was originally tabled, well, two meetings ago, in order to permit him uh, to do a measurement. Uh, Bruce, if you could give us the results of your finding, please. Yeah, I measured the accessory dwelling unit inside. It's uh, 16 and a half by 35 feet, which is a total of 577.5 square feet. 16 and a half by 35 feet? Correct. For a total of 577.5. Probably, you know, 30, 40 feet less than that because of the stairwell, but, you know, I measured the box. It's just less than the 650. And under the relevant section of the Cape zoning ordinance, uh, is it 19-7-5? Yeah, 600, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, what is it? 600 square feet, I'm sorry, I said 650. But Um, section 19 7 5 is on page 135 of the zoning ordinance. Which uh, places a maximum of 600 square feet on an accessory dwelling unit. Uh, my recollection is that was the only issue that was left um, unanswered from when we originally took this up, but since it's been a while, uh, do any board members have questions for uh, Ms. Wilson that should be taken up at this time? I don't have questions of Ms. Wilson. I, I think um, I had a couple of uh, issues that I needed to be re have resolved. Uh, Bruce, I asked about uh, egress, and I also asked about uh, whether it was sheetrocked in the garage for fire protection. And I think you reported to me that a window has been changed, an egress window has been installed. Yes, that's correct. All right, and what about sheetrocking in the basement? I, oh, I didn't, I didn't check for sheetrock. I must have not got that when you asked that before, if you did, because I, but I, I will check that, make sure that's done. But I mean, that's a code issue that um, technically, Sashford only unit wouldn't even normally been built at this point for right. approval by the Board of Appeals. But so all those code issues would, would come into play at some point after. But I appreciate your concern on that. I got my hand slapped several, well, a few years ago for voting for something that. Uh, indicated our endorsement of an action. So that's why I'm cautious on these things now. Anything from anybody else? Um, just as a reminder, there are actually two separate sections of the ordinance that are applicable to this application. The first is 19-7-5 on page 135, the creation of an accessory dwelling unit. But um, we also um, have the conditional use permits, um, section 19-5-5 on page 52 of the ordinance that applies. So we have two separate sets of criteria to consider.
So I guess the first question is whether for the conditional use <coughs> permit, um, I think we should probably go through each of the elements of the conditional use approval to make sure that everybody is satisfied that those conditions um, have been met. So let's go through those one at a time. Um, and I'm looking at page 52 of the ordinance, uh, paragraph D. The board shall, after review of required materials, authorize issuance of a conditional use permit upon a showing that, first, any conditions prescribed for such conditional use will be satisfied. Now, we haven't set forth any limiting conditions um, at this point. And it may be implied, and Bruce, if you can give us your input on this, I mean, one obvious limitation here, or condition, I suppose, is that the accessory dwelling can only be used as an accessory dwelling for the current occupant of that dwelling. In other words, if the individual who is living in there now moves out, somebody else can't move in and have the portion of the home qualify as an accessory dwelling unit, correct? Hasn't been, that hasn't been my interpretation in the four years I've been here. It's, as, long as, they, as long as that person who, who resides there um, has a close personal relationship, that's been the interpretation since I've been here anyways. And approvals are... Well, but isn't it up to this board to determine whether it's a close personal relationship? Or is it up to the homeowner to make that determination? I don't. I don't know the answer to that. I. I, uh, I assume if the if the if everything's a place for accessory dwelling unit, that that um, the governing force would be would be the enforcement issue through the code office to make sure that that continues, whether it be the person who was in there when they got the approval or or a mother or a father or, or somebody thereafter. I would assume that it would be the same situation. Um, okay, well, I think that's one thing that we as a board need to decide. Under 19-7-5 on page 135, the introductory paragraph, paragraph A says, an accessory dwelling unit is intended to be a separate suite of rooms within a home where the unit is occupied by one or two people who have a close personal relationship with the residents of the main dwelling. So we either approve it as an accessory dwelling unit, which I suppose for all time makes that portion of the house um, available to be used as an accessory dwelling unit, or we condition it to the current occupant. I've led the applicant to believe um, that because her circumstances may change with her, with a, with a relative, a mother, mm -hmm. um, moving into that maybe within the next two year or two, I, I, I led her to believe that she could seek that approval now, and that would that would suffice for your for your mother. Yeah, I think. Well, are you talking about the owner that of the house? Relationship. I think we went over all this in January, <clears throat> but I think. Are you talking about the owner of the house? If that changes? No, I'm talking about the person who's occupying the accessory the dwelling, exce oh, the person are. who's actually renting it from you. Right. Yeah. Well, Bruce is correct. If that or when that changes, the only other person would be my mother. Or, you know, our family. Of well, we could, no as a condition, <laughs> make it the current occupant, the current tenant, I guess, or uh, Ms. Wilson's mother. I've been on the board for a number of years, and, and we've granted um, a lot of uh, as accessory dwelling units, and never have we put a limitation as to who could occupy it. So this is a new precedent that I, cannot, I will not support. Uh, I know several months ago when you were here, I did ask if granting the uh, accessory dwelling unit goes with the property forever and a day, and Bruce said no, that uh, it didn't. I thought it did, 
and I still contend that it does. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable putting a limitation as to who occupies this uh, uh, after this occupant moves out. It's in the regulations, though. That that's, that's the nature of the... But we're not going to be a policing agency, are we, to determine who, whether this person qualifies for a uh, close personal relationship? If I could. Well, I, th I think we actually, in essence, are that policing agency. I mean, we ch at the time the Wilsons presented this to us, they needed to present evidence that the occupant had a close personal relationship. Um, but I'm going back to the number that we have approved, or this board has approved, not just in my, my uh, uh, terms that have been here. And I don't, none have come back in to ask if this person can occupy it. Uh, it's unusual. Bruce, has it happened that someone's come back in and said this person's moving out? Is it okay if this person occupies this unit? It has been my interpretation of the audience that, that once you have approval, as long as, as long as didn't make any difference what the person was. It could change as long as it was a close personal relationship. As long as it fit the code, which is the close personal relationship. Right. right. No. I think that's what we said in January. Well, that if that's what's intended by the ordinance, that's fine. Well, I mean, that's simply what I was asking, is, is right. whether it's something that's intended to be limited to this specific relationship, or whether it is something that will apply to the property for all time without further review by this board. That question was asked, has been asked before, and the answer has been the same as I've given tonight. Um, that's been the history of an accessory dwelling unit since they, since they uh, incorporated in the ordinance. Um, it's been my understanding from, from what research I've done that the intent was, was to not limit it necessarily to an in-law but to go what, uh, maybe a step further and, st and allow somebody that's not a relative. But it, it also is my understanding that that, it, 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 that could change as long as the circumstance was the same, that the face could change. Um, and if I thought that it was an issue before this meeting, I certainly would have got uh, a legal interpretation, but um, I'm a little bit blind. And I don't know that there's a legal interpretation to be put on it. Um, it's, it's kind of vague. and. I think it could it be is vague. I think it could be ready. Maybe for that's it. maybe that was deliberate. I don't I don't I don't know. Well, to the extent that it's vague, I think it's you know, it's within this board's prerogative to go either way on it. If we want to simply create if we want to approve it for a condition that will run with the house now and for all time, that's fine. Um, I think the only issue we're looking at now is are there any conditions to be prescribed for the conditional use permit? And if the answer to that is no, there are no conditions, um, then let's move on to the next I element. think the only condition that, that still lingers there is, is this unit, uh, does this unit meet code? And that's, that's the stipulation that I would put on it. Um, Bruce mentioned that they did change the window. I'm, I'm comfortable with that, but just, you know, doesn't meet code. That's and in all due respect, I, I don't really think the board needs to dictate that. Fine. To, that I need to tell the applicant to do it to code. I, I think that's an understood situation. Okay. If, I, if I'm not requiring that, then I shouldn't be holding the job. Okay. Okay. Well, in that case, um, <clears throat> it seems that uh, that that we are of a mind that we will not. Uh, prescribe um, any conditions for the conditional use. Correct? That's correct. Okay. Well, let's go on to number two. Um, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic um, in its vicinity. Um, all those who believe that that um, element has been met. Um, that element having been met by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next is the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. All those who believe that that element has been met. 
and that element having been met by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next, that the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All those who believe, who believe that that element has been met. Um, that haven't been satisfied by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. And finally, that the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. Um, and in this case, we don't have a proposed building being added. Uh, the building is in existence. And the exterior is not being changed in any way, correct? Right. Um, all those who believe that that element has been met. And that element having been met by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Um, we've satisfied all of the elements for a conditional use approval, which takes us to section 19-7-5, the creation of the accessory dwelling unit. Um, and I don't think we need to go through the additional, I don't think we need to go through each of the paragraphs of that. Um, can I have a motion for, um, to approve the application of Michael and Lee Wilson? Would anybody like to make that motion? On the, on the, excuse me. Chair, on the, on the draft, I did include four uh, conditions uh, that, that are part of the overall approval. But may, that may not have to be there, but um, I think it's clear that that should be somewhere uh, so that the applicant knows what the approval is based on. If you look at your draft uh, notice of accessory. Oh, so we do have four conditions. Uh, number one, that there shall be one dedicated parking space for the accessory dwelling unit. Number two, no home, no home occupation or home business is permitted now or in the future. Number three, the single family and accessory dwelling unit shall be held in the same ownership. Number four, an attested copy of this conditional use permit shall be filed in the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds within 90 days of this approval. So Bruce, you're suggesting that those in fact be conditions prescribed under the conditional use? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Only because I think it's important to have those on the, on the permit itself so that the applicant is aware that that, that is a limitation upon approval. I mean, that, that stuff has to happen anyways. And maybe right, should, that's part of the maybe we shouldn't call it a condition accessory approval, dwelling unit requirements right. for approval. But I think it's important somehow to incorporate it into whatever paperwork they get. Um, Maybe, maybe the title condition approval isn't correct, but um, for lack of a better term, I... Okay, well, since they're being titled as conditions of approval, um, let's go back to 19-5-5D, um, item number one, any conditions prescribed for such conditional use will be satisfied. Um, all those in favor of adding as conditions for approval the four uh, conditions that I um, just read. Um, those conditions are approved by a vote of six in favor, uh, zero opposed. Um, now can we have one motion for the approval of the application? I'll move uh, for the conditional use permit uh, for the property to 82, light, 82 two Lights Road uh, be approved uh, as amended. All those in favor of the app of the uh, mo well, can I have a second, first of all? or an amendment. I was waiting for it to be completed. Are we adding with the added conditions? Yes. Okay. 
I'll second the motion. With four conditions of approval. Right. Certainly. Second the motion. Okay. Uh, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? The motion and the application are approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. The next item of old business is to hear the request of Leslie Evans, 133 Two Lights Road, tax map U41, lot five, for a conditional use permit to operate a home business, specifically an office slash studio. And would you state excuse your me. name and address, please, for us? Yes, um, Leslie Evans. Excuse Excuse me one second. I make a motion to take this off the table for consideration. Thank you for bringing me into, into line here. This was tabled, so we do officially need that, ta that motion. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fristasi. A motion to remove the matter from the table. A second. Second. All those in favor? <clears throat> the matter is removed from the table by a vote of six to zero. Now your name and address, please. Uh, Leslie Evans, 133 Two Lights Road. This matter was presented to us at our March 27 meeting, um, tabled at that time, um, Ms. Evans, because um, you are not available. We did receive your, your letter, um, but we declined to act on it in your absence. And do we have uh, questions for Ms. Evans from any of the board members? Ms. Evans, why don't you take um, a couple of minutes, if you don't mind, um, and so everybody here understands exactly what you're proposing. Okay. Um, give us a quick overview of what your okay. application is, please. Um, I have a design firm and have had one for several years, and I've recently downsized considerably um, because of the financial climate and a lot of reasons. I want to spend more time with my boy and just get smaller. So I have a lot of out-of-state clients. I do kind of custom design work for national clients, which I can, at this point in my life, do from anywhere, really. So I don't need as, ma as much staff as I've had in the past. So I haven't made this move yet. That's why I'm applying for this permit to, for now, to do it out of my home. I have a fairly large home, and um, it's a very low-impact business. It basically involves computers and design. My own. Creativity, I guess. You can ask me any. So you have how many employees who will be working from the house? Just one, my production manager, one full-time employee. And what I do is I source out other things that I might need, depending on the job I do, it's a catalog or packaging or brochure. <laughs> Questions for Ms. Evans? Now, the board is never this easy, Ms. Evans. Don't uh, get a false sense of security. No, I don't. Don't worry. <laughs> Do you have any estimates of how much traffic this might generate, additional traffic? Well, for the one employee. Um, but most of my, as I said, most of my clients are out of state, so I meet with them at their offices. Um, so uh, other than FedEx or UPS delivering things, which we have anyway, I, I don't know that it would really impact traffic. You don't, you don't have any clients? You don't anticipate Coming in, a, no, it's not like a doctor's office or anything like that. No, no, no. A lot of my clients have never even seen my larger offices. Right. And I've done tons of work for them, and they've never even come to my space, right. especially with the electronics now of a computer. Right. Okay, thank you. What about future plans for expansion? If 
as you, as you stated earlier about economic conditions being one of the reasons for it, if your business picks up again, would you be adding additional um, employees? No, I would. I really don't want to get bigger. I want to now just concentrate on doing just choice projects. But if I ever did get bigger, I would go and get office space as I've had before. So the business out of the home would only be one employee right. and yourself. And just confirmation on the hours of operation, Monday through Friday. Yep, nine to five. Bruce, do we have any method of monitoring or enforcing uh, uh, the statement she just made? Generally speaking, it's one of those situations where if, if uh, somebody complains that there's more traffic than there should be or there's, they see employees that number more than the one, uh, then I'd be alerted to that and, and take action at that point. Other than that, there's not really anything, any way to monitor unless um, it was obvious to me as I rode by that there was something going on that was beyond the approval. Um, what triggers it generally is, is, is a neighbor that may, may have a hard time understanding what's going on. And would you assume that this conditional use uh, decision go with the, this property owner and not the property in the event that your well, residence is sold in the future? Right, right. Uh, yes. I would think so. Yes, I think it's specific to the to the. Uh, it's my opinion, interpretation of the ordinance that it's it's specific to the person who's applying for the additional use, and it goes with that person, not necessarily with the with the uh, with the house, unless somebody moved in and, as part of the package, took over the business in the same way fashion it was run uh, by Miss Evans. Then I would say possibly that that can carry on, but. Other than that situation, I think you'd have to go back before the board if somebody wanted to do another type of business, even if it's still an office. Thank you. Would you plan on putting up a sign advertising the business at the house? I don't need a sign. Bruce, the neighbors would have been, the, especially the budding neighbors, would have been notified of the intent. Yes, everybody's, everybody within, was it 300 or 500? I think it's, I think it's, 300, it's, uh, I think it's 300 feet or the, the nearest 25. We always notify at least 25, okay. even if we have to go beyond that. And I have had nobody uh, contact the office with any questions. Okay. There may be somebody here in the audience, audience that, that may want to speak, but I, I'm not aware of that. Okay. And I assume, Bruce, that to approve this, we have to be satisfied that the definition of home business in the ordinance it's been met. is yes. met. Yes. Right? And so just for everybody's quick review, um, on pages six and seven of the ordinance, um, a home business is defined. Um, and the criteria are the following. Not more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be involved or employed on the premises in the business or professional use. Uh, the nature of the business or professional use shall not increase vehicular traffic on the street by more than 2% of the current average annual daily traffic. The business or professional use shall not produce any odors, fumes, dust, glare, noise, or electrical interference in excess of that produced by normal residential use any external alteration of the building or site, including the provision of parking in accordance with section 19-7-8. Off-street parking shall not detract from the residential character of the neighborhood. The square footage occupied by the business of professional use shall occupy an area no greater than 20% of the floor area of the structure. All signs shall comply with the sign ordinance and there shall be no outdoor storage of equipment or materials. Mr. Prestashi. My question, and the reason I asked for this to be tabled last 
month is I don't see on your plan the turnaround that you described, nor parking for this for this vehicle for the uh, for your employee, and with the delivery of packages with FedEx or, or UPS, um, I think the the turnaround is essential. It looks like a quite a long gravel driveway. It's a long driveway. Yeah, and if it's occupied by a vehicle, it's going to be difficult for them to to back into this turnaround area. So my concern is it does not show parking area on the, on the plan. And um, um, I think that, that that's very important for my, for my uh, consideration on this. I don't see the turnaround marked on delineated oh. on this oh. either. It's a big house right. and it's a big driveway area. Um, <coughs> I'm sure I understand like right now we usually live our cars outside of the garage anyway. So when UPS comes up they just there's a turnaround area. There's an area enough big enough because the house was just rebuilt over the last two years and there's an area big enough in the front of the garage to be able to back around and easily turn uh, within that area shown on the map. Um, or at least that's my... Or we could opinion. enlarge the area. Have you received UPS and FedEx deliveries already? Oh, absolutely. And, and they're making the turn sufficiently? Oh, absolutely. I mean, just for personal, you know, UPS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there's 40 feet um, at, at the widest point and um, 35 feet at the narrowest point. It would be at right angles to the garage by the full depth of the garage, which is 30 feet. Just one clarification on your letter that you submitted um, last month, you indicated the hours would be from 9 until 6, and now you Tonight you're saying nine until five. Well, <coughs> sometimes we stay till five thirty. It sort of depends on what the workload is. But as far as my employee, the employee, her hours are nine to five. You know, her technical hours are nine to five. My type of business isn't, it's not like you punch a clock, do you know what I mean? It's not, at five, mm -hmm. people don't just say, oh, we're leaving. It's more of, you know, they have their work done, they leave. It's a creative kind of business. And I, if I may comment on that, I, th I think that's more geared to, to, let's say, an office where you'd have clients coming on a regular basis in and out than it is to the person who comes in and stays for the day, um, because then you, you don't want, you may not want lights, come, traffic coming in at all, all hours of the night. Um. Ms. Evans, if we are going to um, place a condition for a description of the business to be conducted, mm -hmm. um, what, what is an adequate description to meet what you currently do. What do we call it? A de is Graphic it a design, design studio? Graphic design. Graphic design. Mr. Smith, conditions two and five both require calculations. For instance, the 2% of the current average annual daily traffic. Have you monitored that or taken any taken that into consideration? Unless, it, unless it's, a, it's something raised by a neighbor um, or it's a dead end street that it's obvious it could, it, it, it could be a problem. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it usually isn't anything that, that uh, the board wishes to pursue when it's obvious that a road like Two Lights Road gets substantial traffic, especially for this type of business. So 
No, I didn't go anyway with that because I didn't think that would be an issue. Okay. And on the square footage, the 20% of the floor, it, it falls within that criteria, right? Generally speaking, I, I, I uh, want them to tell me that it's 20%. It's 20 um, but I don't necessarily uh, calculate it out unless it's, unless it's closed again. Um, the house is huge. It's, it's, a big, it's a big house. Um, and if you'll see the location of the home business, it takes up a very small portion of one floor. Um, so I didn't see a need okay. for that either. Other questions for Ms. Evans? Any recommendations for conditions uh, or approval from any board members? Hours of use. Do we have any no public public comment? To, is there anyone in the audience? Is there anyone here on this matter who wishes to speak for or against? In the past, we've had a, a full house for people from this area speaking against um, businesses, non-conforming or conforming. So I'm kind of surprised that there's no one here. Uh, well, it isn't quite down into that, the, the, the hot area. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's close. It has the name, uh, which, which surprises me. and. Uh, but based on the, the lack of um, public opinion, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll be quiet and, and listen. Yeah. Well, that will close the public uh, comment portion of the hearing. And I'll ask again whether any board members have any recommended conditions to submit as part of the approval process. You point out the conditions that they may impose uh, on, on the draft. Is on well, on the draft, there are a list of seven different ones. Off-street, off-site street improvements, access restrictions, hours of use, buffering and screening, utility improvements, performance guarantees, um, recorded Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. And is this something that uh, is routinely? What are the pros and cons, Bruce, on whether we would have it recorded or not? Well, it's th those, those right out in the book um, section on page 53, and I put it on there. I, I haven't seen too many, too many uh, home business approvals that's, that uh, had to be recorded. Yeah, I don't think I've seen any of them that the board required to be recorded. I guess the only suggested condition that, that I might request in light of the fact that you've indicated that you have no interest in putting up a sign um, is that we not permit a sign as part of the condition. Um, it's fine. If, and that, that's consistent with. Um, yeah, because I'm not like an antique store advertising. I don't get walk-in traffic or anything like that. It's just um, people who want to hire me know who I am and they hire me. Well, I'd like to suggest as one of the conditions that, that there would be exterior signage advertising the business. Mm -hmm. Other conditions? Perhaps the conditions on the hours of use confined to uh, weekday, 9 to 5, 9 to 6, as an alternative. You know, I mean, that's <clears throat> somewhat unenforceable because if they live there, mm -hmm. you know, and they're not having clients come, I mean, that's what you control. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to, if I went by at 11 o'clock and the lights were on and I knew they were 
doing some work. I certainly don't want to have to enforce that. Um. I, my point on that was mostly from the employee leaving, or coming to and leaving at perhaps unusual hours for the comfort of the additional neighbors. I guess with only one employee and with no client traffic, I think the hours of use are really intended to um, make sure that there aren't clients, you know, coming and going um, at various hours, either at six o'clock in the morning or after hours when right. people are trying to sleep, um, as opposed to one employee. Um, we can certainly consider hours, but I'm not sure it's necessary for this limited use. Okay. I leave it to the board's discretion. Well, hearing no other conditions, um, shall we go through the requirements for the approval of a conditional use? Um, first, um, a finding that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic um, in its vicinity. Um, all those um, who believe that that element has been satisfied, um, six in favor, zero opposed. Next, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. Um, all those who believe that that element has been satisfied um, approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. All those who believe that that element has been satisfied. Approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. All those who believe that that element has been satisfied. Approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. And the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design appearance or architecture. <coughs> um, and again, this is in an existing house. You're not doing anything to change the exterior, correct? Um, all those who believe that that element has been satisfied. And that is approved by a vote of six in favor, um, zero opposed. And the only other item is whether there are any conditions prescribed for such uh, conditional use. Um, the only condition, well, uh, two conditions have been mentioned. Um, one, I'd like to suggest that there be no exterior signage um, advertising the business. And Mr. LaPlante, um, <coughs> ours? That did not seem to have the board's um, approval, so I'd be willing to withdraw it if you want to limit the conditions to simply yours. The, uh, I don't know that mine has the board's approval either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> However you wish to proceed um, from here. Well, why don't we um, take them one at a time. Um, all those in favor of adding a condition that there be no exterior signage advertising the uh, business. Um, and opposed, um, and that condition is added by a vote of five in favor, um, one opposed. I guess one other condition uh, comes to mind to add, and that is that the use be limited to a graphic design office slash studio. Comments on that? What would be the situation for that if if they were to change business or if they were if there was a new occupant to the home with a home business? Because it was well, my understanding earlier that if it's a new occupant, they're not pre approved for a home business. Um, I think it would be if Ms. Evans decides to expand the business or change the scope of the business to do something else in addition to or in place of graphic design. So the application is limited to 
um, a home business, specifically a, a graphic design office slash studio. I make make a quick comment. Sure. It, that's that was the basis of the application, so I'm not sure that that needs to be repeated. You've done it for 20 years, so. Right. Well, the application is for a home business, specifically an office slash studio. Right, but I, based on your asking the applicant what kind, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be changing that um, to a, specifically a graphic design office okay. studio. Oh, that will be included in the order. That will be included in the in the draft uh, in the uh, notice. Correct. On the second paragraph. I would make that specific to that as a graphic design studio. So in essence, that will be added as a limiting Correct. condition. Correct. Okay. Um, all the, uh, well, can I have a motion um, on the application from someone? Are you going to vote on the other condition that was proposed by Mr. LaPlante? Or do you want to? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to not vote on it. I was under the impression that you weren't asking for a vote on it. Would you like a vote on it? I'd like to have a vote on it. Okay. Um, all those in favor of um, adding as a condition um, a limitation on hours of use from was it 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, two in favor, uh, four opposed. Um, that limiting condition fails. So we're left with one limiting condition, and that is no exterior signage advertising the business. Any other conditions? Um, can I have a motion on the application, please? <coughs> I move that we grant the conditional use permit for a home business, uh, specifically an office studio graphic design business at 133 Two Lights Road. And a second? Second. Uh, discussion on the motion? All those in favor? The motion is approved and the application is approved by a vote of six to zero. Thank you, Ms. Evans. Next item on the agenda, uh, new business. And the only item of new business on the agenda is to hear the appeal of Sherilyn and David Andrews, 15 Grover Road, tax map U20, lot 6F, for a right side property line variance of 13 feet 6 inches from the required 25 feet to construct a two-story addition at 11 feet, six inches from the right side property line. And are you Sherilyn Andrews? Yes, sir. And is this David Andrews? Yes. Any comments from the board before we proceed? I'd like to thank you for a very complete, well-organized presentation you made to us. Thank you. We put a lot of time into it. I'm sure you did. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Andrews, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, my name is Charlin. This is David Andrews. And as you know, we are here to request a variance and approval to build a two-story, two-car garage on our property at 15 Grover Road. We have recently moved back to the area to assist our aging parents and care for our home. And in order to do this, we need extra living space. 
Our parents have lived in their neighborhood for 36 years, but due to ill health, which is referenced in Section 9 of our proposal, which is a letter from my father-in-law's doctor, they are no longer able to care for their daily living needs alone. We have looked at every possible option so they can stay in their home and maintain it. We believe our only option is to construct additional living space that will enable us to assist in maintaining the house and at the same time care for our parents in an environment they feel most comfortable in. Since relocating back to Maine to be with our parents, we have spent considerable time and money with planners, surveyors, and state code enforcers to make certain our proposed garage meets all local and state codes. We have reviewed our design and situation with our neighbors, which is referenced in Section 8, and they agree that the proposed addition would not affect the aesthetics or decrease the value of our neighborhood. <coughs> Section 7 of our proposal shows existing garages in the Grover Road neighborhood. Of the 11 houses, five presently have garages and one has a barn. As you can see, there are a variety of different styles throughout the area. We believe that after you review this section in conjunction with our proposed design, you will see that this addition will complement the existing architectural integrity of our neighborhood. Because of the design restraints, we would like to request an 11.5 foot variance from our south property line, which we have referenced in section three of our proposal. We have looked at numerous locations for placement of the proposed garage, but due to the existing location of the house, the septic system, and the design of the garage, we are unable to meet the local requirement of a 25-foot sideline setback. If approved, we will be relocating part of our filter bed, which we have referenced in Section 5, in order to meet the local state and codes for the placement of the garage on our lot. In closing, it is our understanding that the town has given variances for hardship cases. We truly feel that this is a hardship case with very few alternatives. We hope you will consider our request. Thank you for your time and consideration concerning our endeavors. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to David and he can explain our model to you. What we did, we built an exact scale model according to the foot of our house and our neighbor's house. The fence line right here is our existing property line, which we're looking for 11 and a half feet from it, the building, to the property line. This is the new addition. This is our existing cape. You really can't see it that good from there, but in the back, we're showing the existing um, filter bed, our new filter bed, and the part of the filter bed that we have to remove that we've gone over in detail with Bruce and the soils engineers. I'll leave it open to questions now. Do you have any further? Now, the two of you are currently living in the house? Along with our, with our parents, yes. Um, how many people are living in the house? Four. Two, ad four adults. And it's... Are you the owners of the house? Yes, we bought, um, we bought our in-law's house about nine or ten years ago now as an investment at the time because we were traveling. And so the house is ours. And we had all intention to keep traveling and stuff. I'm an engineer, I travel, used to travel around the country. And because of my parents' ill health, when we came home, we just couldn't leave them. We realized that it was time to stay in Maine. So Mr. Andrews, it's, it's your parents yeah. who are in the house with you? Yeah, my mother's here, but my father's home. try to be as detailed as we could in our proposal and anything you have for questions. Well, your packet is very complete and as Mr. Keneally did, I commend you for the detail that you've provided. It's, it makes it very easy for us to understand what you're trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? I have a couple on the septic design. Uh, first to Bruce. What is the minimum distance a septic system can be located um, near a foundation or a building?
with a variance that could be it can be granted um, down, but I can't I can't recollect exactly what it is. But uh, you would call because I think it I know, five feet. down to five feet with a variance through through the code office through the department inspector's office from your office. Correct. <clears throat> when there are no other alternatives. I mean, I, yeah. Have you granted this variance? No, not yet. If are the we, project doesn't apply, there's no sense to grant, to, to issue a permit. Um, what, is, what is the requirements to get the variance? What does one have to do to request a, or to get a variance from your office? The site evaluator must design the septic system to, to within the limitations of the plumbing code. Um, and uh, I have to visit the site um, to assure that the measurements are correct. And then if, if, if all else is uh, in order, then I can issue a permit. And may I interject that um, the way it's designed with the new um, filter bed, it would be a seven foot, it would be seven feet from the um, structure. This, this doesn't have a full foundation. No. It's, it's only it's a garage, it's, no. It's, it's a garage four foot cross that's been backfilled. So at five feet to a full foundation, then, then there could be some problems. Uh, but because it's, because it's going to be a backfilled concrete poured floor, um, then my concerns with any waste back in, into that area are, are, are laid. Yeah. My concern would be this is an 8,500 square foot lot, and you're increasing the size of a building on this to the same size of the existing building, with all the water runoff coming from the roof and all to this the backyard, the septic area, that it may cause problems. That, that, that was my initial concern when I saw the application is the septic system, design, layout, location. Yeah, you're talking 20, 20 by 55 feet. Um, it's quite a large area. And it doesn't give you much for anything else. You're mentioning that the shed will be relocated. Uh, you're probably going to have to come back to us for a variance on that uh, because you can't place it anywhere. You can't place it on the septic on the septic system itself. Um, excuse me, but the, the shed is going to be sold. We're, we will, won't have a need for the shed. Okay. All right, that, that was a, um, the septic system design and being rebuilt was, was uh, a major concern that I had. So I, at that point, I'll, I'll stop and let someone else ask questions. If I may just elaborate on the septic system, uh, you know, there are licensed site evaluators such as uh, Frick Associates who, who are the experts, and, and I rely on them. And as long as they meet the distances as, as, as outlined in the code, um, then I'll approve the design. Um, if they thought there was going to be an issue with run, runoff, he, he, he would have probably put some um, French drains in or some other manner to uh, take care of uh, and alleviate any problems from runoff from the roofs. Uh, he evidently didn't consider that as a problem and therefore designed it without that. So just, just, to, just to let you know that these people are licensed to do this and that's their expertise. Bruce, what does the code speak to in terms of the leach bed's proximity to the abutting neighbor? So, uh, in the diagram, if I'm reading correctly, it's 13 feet. Does that fall within code? Well, it's, it's, it's uh, I mean, I wish I had the code with me, but to a property line, you can go down as close as 10 feet on a replacement. Okay. Uh, what's, what's considered most important is, is distances to, to other people's wells mm -hmm. uh, and your own well. And I mean, that's probably the most critical. Um, <laughs> And they're on public water in that area, as it is.
in driving down the street, it looks like your lot is about the same size as most of the other lots on, on the street. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. And <coughs> the other the other homes that have garages, um, most of those appear to be single stall garages. There are a couple. We have, um, I think it's in section eight, or I'm sorry, section seven, um, the comparison. But there are um, a couple of, uh, well, there's three actually, uh, double garages. Um, picture number three, number four, and number five. And those are under, I'm sorry, what, which tab? Oh, thank section you. Section seven. Section seven. And picture four is an upstairs dwelling that they are using, similar to what we're looking for. And picture four is where on, on the, the street? Map. Picture four uh -huh. is on 6N of the map, is lot 6N. <coughs> Do you get to that house from Grover Road? Yes, I just noticed on the map there, that line shouldn't be there. But yes, it, it Grover Road extends right down to 6N, and I believe this They got a turnaround down at the bottom of the street where the snow plows and everybody turns around. And there is a proposed street that Skip Murray owns that he, for future lots. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Other questions for the Andrews? Are there other people here who wish to speak for or against this application? Um, first, I'll ask whether there are people who, would, who are here to speak in favor of the application. Would you like to go first? Sure. Okay, why don't you come on up? And name, tell us your name and address, please. Sure. My name is Dan Howard. I live at 19 Grover Road. I'm actually one of the abutters. I live right next door. My wife and I, we have the pleasure of living next door to the Andrews. And we fully support this proposal tonight. And we hope you do as well for a couple of reasons. One is the entire neighborhood unanimously supports it. Each resident supports this. Secondly, <coughs> you have a proposal in front of you that aesthetically is pleasing to the neighborhood. And third and most importantly, my wife and I hope you approve this proposal for the parents of David, for Mr. and Mrs. Andrews, who, as I mentioned earlier, for 36 years, raised their children, paid taxes, and given a lot to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Uh, who else would like to speak? My name is Mary Jane Mullen, and I live at Five Grover, which is two houses up from the Andrews. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we've been here 25 years, and we're definitely in favor of you granting them. And I think it's wonderful in this day and age when young people will come back home and take care of their parents when they're needed. And everybody on the street is in favor of this. It certainly will help the value of our property and like I say everybody in the neighborhood is in favor of this and I heartily recommend you approving it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else who would like to speak in favor? My name is Sterling Warrington. I live at Four Grove Road. <clears throat> Before you, um, I start, <clears throat> you have a question about leach fields and stuff. I've lived there 35 years, have the same septic system that was installed in. 
It's all <coughs> gravel, so I don't think you'll ever have a problem with the expanded leach field. It's all, <coughs> all gravel, so there's, I don't care if you put it 20 feet away from the line. It wouldn't uh, have any effect on anything. And I think it's great that Sharon and Dave came back to take care of their parents. They have the best kept house on the street, <laughs> and <laughs> all we do is add value to the rest of the neighborhood. Thank you, and I'm sorry. I would feel very offended if the board didn't approve this. And what was your address, sir? Four Grover Road. Four Grover. Thank you. Can I ask his first name, too, please? Um, and and your first name, please. Sterling. Sterling. Oh. And did you get the last name? Boynton. B o i i n g t o n. Anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the application? Serge Sirichny, uh, 9 Grover Road. We, uh, I, I'm sorry, your name? Serge Sirichny. S-E-R-G-E is the first name. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, my wife and I fully support this. We do not have a problem at all. And um, again, I'd like to, they mentioned the whole neighborhood does approve this. And uh, we think it would be a good thing. Wonderful neighbors. Are you the abutter? I, that's the house, yes. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak in favor of the application? Is there anyone um, here to speak uh, in opposition to the application? Okay. Um, thank you all. That will close the public uh, comment portion of the hearing. Comments, discussion by board members. I personally think it's a highly commendable thing what they're trying to do, and I plan on supporting it. It's also encouraging to see so much support from the, from the neighbors, especially the abutters, in, in support of the proposed project. Comments, discussion? Um, I agree. It is, it's, it's nice to see the whole neighborhood out, the whole street virtually um, in support, um, especially the abutters. Um, and obviously, the Andrews have to be commended for being willing to take care, to take care of, of elderly parents. The only question I have about this for the board. Um, and it's just something that, that we have to address, and that is the requirement that the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general, the general circumstances of the neighborhood. Um, and I appreciate some input from those who are firmly in favor of how that element fits into um, the approval of the application. Chairman, I'm not sure I could uh, give you the support you wanted on that, and it's interesting that I was going through the findings of fact and I was checking off everything in favor except I had trouble checking that particular uh, uh, clause. 
However, uh, after seeing the proposal and the uh, outpouring from the neighborhood, I think the intent here uh, of the ordinance is to protect the neighborhood. I think the neighborhood was here this evening uh, making their wishes clear. So I, I guess I took my interpretation that the, the spirit of that law has been met. It, and that's a reasonable response. Any other response to that? Because we're going to have to vote on that as a separate element. What they're doing, and you know, you've got a lot of support for what they're doing, but I'm wondering if we had people that were in opposition, if we would look at this a little closer. The size of the building is 30 by by 28, uh, substantially larger than what else is in the neighborhood. Uh, square footage probably is greater than the existing building. So you're doubling the size of the building. Um, is this the intent of the ordinance, to allow variances to, to double the size of a house on a small lot, basically a non-conforming lot at 8,500 square feet? Um, so. Um, it's, it's interesting to see you have 100% of the neighborhood supporting this because there was a time when the neighborhood was divided a while ago, and half on one side uh, supporting uh, a variance request and half not. So I'm glad to see you together on something. Were you all, all opposed to? No, no, no. But, but no, that wasn't correct. It was not half and half. No, we're beyond the public. Uh, comment portion of, of the hearing. I didn't, it wasn't my intention to represent it. I, I, am, I am complimenting you people for, for being supportive of, of, of a, uh, a proposal. Um, and uh, that, would, that would be my concern, the size, size of the building. Uh, is there an alternative to that? Uh, and I think that's something we have to look at as a board. Well, we've all recognized that being a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals is not a place where you, where you win friends when you don't accept something that is obviously popular um, in a neighborhood. And I'm not saying that we're not accepting it, but we're simply in the midst of a discussion of whether all of the elements have been met. Um, so. Comments on the other elements? I'm just, I'm just looking at item D, that's all. Yeah. Uh, no other uh, feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. Um, and I, I think that there is an alternative and it's a smaller, smaller building. Uh, on the others, you know, I, I, support, uh, I support the application. That's the only one that I have a problem with. May I comment on that, or is that out of procedure? Um, it, it, what was it specifically that you wanted to comment on? Well, the smaller building. Um, the reason why we have this size for, is for the two-car garage, and it's designed to have two doors. Um, if we had a smaller building, it, we could still have the two-car garage, but it would have one large door. And we feel for two reasons. Um, if you open one door, in, one large door, in order to allow the car to, one car to drive in, you're letting in an excessive amount of cold, especially in the winter time. Um, another concern of ours is with the one door. If something should happen to the electricity or to the remote for the garage door going up and down, um, we would hope that, they, that my in-laws would be able to handle the one smaller garage door as opposed to a large, larger door. And that's one of the reasons why we have the size um, that we do, because of the two garage door issue. <coughs> Thank you. 
Well, as unpopular as I sense this comment's going to be, um, I question whether we've met the criteria that the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood, because I think the need here is precisely due to the general circumstances of the neighborhood, and that is um, small, um, non-conforming lots. Um, I also question whether there's significant economic injury, uh, which is defined as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards, which would prevent the applicant from having, from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, uh, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. Um, I realize there is another house with a dual garage, with, uh, even with um, living space over it. Um, but I don't think that this, that significant economic injury is intended to say that a person is entitled to have a home that is as big as any other single home in the neighborhood, but rather it's intended to say that if your home is undersized in comparison with the general scheme of the neighborhood that you are entitled to a variance because you are placed at significant economic injury by not being able to have what seems to be the mean construction size design um, in the neighborhood. Um, and I think that what we have in the house as it stands is a house that is very much in keeping with everything else in the neighborhood um, and that there is no significant economic injury. Um, I say this recognizing that there is real injury in another sense, though by not granting the variance, and that is injury to a specific family. Um, but the ordinance doesn't speak to specific family circumstances as much as it does the neighborhood itself and the character and makeup of the lot. Um, I mean, the equities of this require voting in favor of it until you look at the ordinance. And looking at the ordinance, it seems to me that there's a stumbling block that is going to have me voting against at least one of the elements. And I may be the only person voting against one of the elements. But um, I think is my obligation on the zoning board, I, have, I can't ignore the ordinance as it's written, despite the fact that I would love to see you be able to add just what you've designed uh, to add for the benefit of you and uh, Mr. Andrews' parents. I have an additional question. We're talking two families, uh, four adults, and a question that I asked earlier uh, to the CEO is, are they asking for a, a variance for, a, for an accessory dwelling unit? And the answer was no. Um, I think one of the elements, Bruce, and correct me if I'm if I'm if I'm incorrect, is a kitchen has to be located in this for a an accessory dwelling unit. Yeah, but to, they would have, you know, to qualify for an accessory dwelling unit, there have to be two independent units dependent upon okay. itself. So yeah, a kitchen would would get you there, right. and they, they're not asking for a kitchen. They're not asking extension of the single family. All right. <coughs> It, would it be in order to ask if there was going to be a request to have one in the future? Can't, can't do it. The lot has to be 12,000 square feet. I understand that. So I just hope that the applicant understands that. The applicant First understands that. Yes. Okay. Okay, because I, I certainly wouldn't want to mislead them or let them mm -mm. be under the impression that they could come back in once they've satisfied the 1,500 square foot uh, living space to come back in and ask for an uh, ADU. I was just trying to jump ahead. Fast forward, Dave. Oh, that's fine.
Well, I guess I'd like to add a comment. Um, I, I agree with you, David, as far as the technical, literal interpretation. Um, um, but I, I believe that <clears throat> the larger picture is that the purpose of the zoning regulations, and, uh, et cetera, is to preserve certain character and values for the town. And I believe that what they are doing here is very much in keeping with preserving very important values and very important character that we hope is essential to our town. So I, I, I'm going to veer away from a technically literal interpretation of the criteria for that reason. And to be honest, Mr. Keneally, I'm looking for a reason to do that. I mean, this is, in my mind, I think this is the most difficult matter that's, that I've heard in the time I've been here for that reason. I agree. That I want to grant it, but I'm struggling over one of, the, uh, one of the elements. And if I'm the only one who's struggling over it, it doesn't matter, because it's going to pass anyway. Let's hope you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not clear on why we And I hope so, too. <laughs> why we're building a 28 by 30 foot addition on a 24 foot White House, and I think your builder is here tonight and he can verify this. You can get two nine-foot doors in a 24-foot wide building with no problem. But we're going 28 by 30 deep. Can you tell me why we're going 30 deep? My, my concern is an 8,500-foot lot and we're in the size of the building. That, that's my concern. I have not seen this percentage of increase uh, on a variance since I've been on the board. This is a substantial amount, uh, and, and I, just, I just needed to be justified as to why, why this particular size. Yes, my name's uh, Peter Palanzer. I'm, I'm not the builder, I'm the, I just designed it. Uh, Would you spell your last name for uh, us? Palanza, P-A-L-A-N-Z-A. Thank you. And uh, one thing I wanted to comment on was the, the filter bed. Uh, also, that the they take it out an area seven by seven, and they're also adding on a lot larger area that's approximately uh, thirteen by twenty. So, just to let you know on that, and uh, <clears throat> uh, the, the, your concern is of the size of the garage being twenty-eight by thirty for a two-car garage. Uh, by today's standards, I guess that's not. Do you think that's an oversized or garage? Or it seems to me that's a it's not it's not a three car garage, it's just it's it's a it's a large two car garage. I wouldn't say it's a, you know, by today's standards I would think that most people are building that size two car garage. Are you asking me or telling me? I'm asking you. Yeah. I think it's a large garage for the size house and for, for the size neighborhood. Yes, I think it's an oversized two-car garage. I think it's enormous. Um, the footprint on some of these uh, garages... But, I, but I'm not asking to get into a debate. I'm asking why it's 28 by 30, why it's designed for that size. Well, mostly for the, uh, probably the two doors that they wanted. Are you talking the depth, 30 feet depth? One. One thing we are looking for is more room. I mean, we're poor dealt. I know that's a personal thing, but we've got our lifestyle. My parents got theirs. And one thing we're looking for, just some space. And once again, it comes back to a personal issue about us coming back home. Yeah, that's our problem. That's a family problem. And I support my neighbors for coming up and helping us out. But for the size, I mean, that's something, something like 700 square feet living space for us to live in, to be back with our parents. So we can go down to 600, we can go down to 500, but kind of put yourself in our shoes, and I'm not trying to dump it back on a personal reason either. We're down to very few alternatives. And I keep coming back to the personal thing. My parents are elderly, they need help. Put yourself in our shoes. I'm sorry if I'm dumping back on the personal thing. But that's, we're trying to get back to the bare, you know, 
much space as we can that, to, that we can live in. You are going to be occupying this, not your parents? How big is it? How big is the deck on the back of the house? Rough, roughly. What was the dimensions on the uh, deck? Dave, I've, I think I've, this is a tough issue. Um, looking at the size of this addition, looking at the, at the house, I know these people, there's no way, uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm guessing what the cost of this addition is going to be. I don't think there's any way that these people could sell the house and locate themselves in Cape Elizabeth on something that's going to be this comparable uh, based on what houses are selling for in Cape Elizabeth. And, and as a board, we're faced with some tough decisions. And that is, one of them is to, to, to strain the ordinance to allow people to occupy their homes that they've occupied for a number of years and make it the size that, that they really need to have. Um, I've mentioned it, I think, last, last, uh, last meeting that uh, the individual is a victim of the ordinance, the changing ordinance. Um, and, and our job is becoming more and more difficult as we see more and more of these requests come before us. Uh, whether it's people coming back in to assist their parents or whether it's a growing family, they start off with a house that they can afford, like to stay in Cape Elizabeth, but there's no way they can because of the, the uh, escalating values of the properties. And uh, thank you for your comments, thank you for your patience. Uh, it's a difficult decision for us board members to make. And uh, with the support of the neighborhood supporting this, um, I think that you've convinced me that this is your all, only alternative uh, in this particular case. Uh, and again, you know, you've got, you've got to thank your neighbors for coming out 100% and supporting this, because if they don't have an objection, as I've said in the past, why should I? So, uh, Dave, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote. <laughs> for the very end. I'm, and I'm glad to hear that, because I think that that's, you know, from, from a moral standpoint, from an ethical standpoint, um, in trying to do what is right, I think that's the right uh, position to take on it. Um, and I myself, I mean, with the struggle that I've already uh, verbalized, um, find it hard to justify voting against something that has so many equities in favor of it, um, simply because I think a fair reading of the ordinance doesn't permit voting in favor of it. If there were people here speaking in opposition to it, whether that would change the way we viewed it, it probably would. And I would guess that if there were three families sitting on the other side, um, pointing to various sections of the ordinance saying they haven't been met and it shouldn't be approved, uh, despite the fact that you were all here speaking in favor of it, and despite the equities, it would be made even harder um, as a result. Um, Anyway, with that having been said, I think we're ready to, uh, to vote on these. I'd, I'd like to just make one comment for the record. Um, that this is a 20% building coverage is allowed in that particular district on SEPTA. It's an 8,500 square foot lot. Uh, 1,700 square feet would be allowed, and, and they have uh, 1,680 with the proposed addition in the deck, uh, just, just for point of interest. And the shed is being removed, Correct. which gives them, keeps them in the, under, under the number. Okay, um, let's go down the elements of the ordinance. If I can find the page I'm looking for. Thanks, 
Um, first finding, um, the proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the, of, I'm sorry, let me start over. The proposed variance is not a substantial departure from the intent of the ordinance. Um, all those who believe that the, that element has been satisfied, that is met by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Um, next, a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty. Now this encompasses two broader definitions. Uh, one is the definition of practical difficulty, which is defined as an occasion where the strict application of the ordinance to a property precludes the ability of the property owner to pursue a use permitted in the zoning district in which the property is located and results in significant economic injury to the property owner. And significant economic injury is defined as placing the applicant for a variance at a disadvantage in the neighborhood by applying zoning ordinance standards which would prevent the applicant from having a structure or accessory structure comparable in size, location, and number to those of other lot owners in the immediate neighborhood, but in no case fewer than 10 of the nearest property owners. All those who believe that the element, um, that that element has been satisfied, that a literal enforcement of the ordinance would cause a practical difficulty as defined by 30-A, uh, uh, Main Revised Statutes Annotated, Section 4353-4C. Uh, All those who believe that's been satisfied? And that has been met by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next, the need for a variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general circumstances of the neighborhood. All who believe that that element has been satisfied. And I am opposed to that element and that passes by a vote of five in favor, one opposed. Um, next, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a did I skip one? Um, I did. I'm sorry, I skipped one. Um, next, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not unreasonably detrimentally affect the use or market value of abutting properties. And um, in determining whether a variance would have an unreasonable detrimental effect on the use or market value of abutting properties, the ordinance says that the zoning board shall consider if the variance would have the effect of blocking an established view, posing a fire safety hazard, casting a shadow on an adjoining lot, reducing the appraised value of an adjoining property by 10% or more, or of eliminating the privacy of an adjoining property without an effort to mitigate the lost privacy. Um, and then the phrase <coughs> undesirable character change in the character of the neighborhood is defined as the result of a variance where the structure is larger or closer to the road or property lines than the average of the nearest 10 principal structures, or in the case of a variance request for an accessory structure, the nearest 10 accessory structures. So um, <coughs> all those who believe that that element of the ordinance has been satisfied. And that is approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next, the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. All those who believe that element has been satisfied. And that is approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Um, next, no other feasible alternative to a variance is available to the petitioner. And that is defined in the ordinance <coughs> as in the case of a variance request, there is no other place on the lot taking into consideration the physical constraints of the property or no other location on the structure that the proposed construction could go without the need for a variance or without causing the owner to create other compliance problems on the lot because of the zoning ordinance, deed restrictions, or conditions imposed by a lease or contract. All those who believe that that element has been satisfied and that is approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Uh, next, the granting of, the of a variance will not unreasonably adversely affect the natural environment. 
and all those who believe that element has been satisfied. Six in favor, zero opposed. Um, and last, the property is not located in whole or in part within the shoreland areas as described in Title 38, Section 435. All those who believe that that element has been satisfied. And that is approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Now, having gone through those ordinances, those uh, elements, <coughs> um, could I have a, well, with four or more voting members of the board having found that the application of Sherilyn and David Andrews um, has established that a practical difficulty exists with respect to the applicant's property at 15 Grover Road. In accordance with the provisions of section 19-5-2B1 of the Cape Zoning Ordinance, um, and whereas four or more voting members of the board have found that the applicant has met the applicant's burden of proof in establishing that all conditions specified in 19-5-2B1 have been met, um, could I have a motion from someone um, that the application for a variance uh, for a right side property line variance of 13 feet 6 inches from the required 25 feet to construct a two-story addition at 11 feet 6 inches from the right side property line for the construction of the addition or structure specified in the application uh, be approved. So moved. Second. 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 Uh, discussion on the motion? All those in favor? And the application is approved by a vote of six in favor, zero opposed. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. LaPlante made the final motion or Mr. Keneally? I did. Mr. Keneally made the final motion, second by Mr. Kentucky. Maybe we both did. Okay, the same time. We'll let you ride. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Andrews. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, communications. Do we have any? I don't believe so. Communications from anyone? Can we have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. LaPlante. Second? I'll second that. All those in favor? We are adjourned.